We're live. We're live, guys. How are you doing? Uh, today, my topic is what did I learn from 40 days fasting? 40 days of fasting. Well, guys, as you can see, pretty damn slim. <laughs> That's the first thing you will notice about me. My face. Um, no more double chin. I had fucking triple chins at one point, I think. I had the double chin and maybe a triple chin. I was over 100 kilogram, which is 220, 30. That's like about 230 pounds when I started. And I'm about 5 feet, 7, 8, 5 feet, 7, 8 inches, uh, which is 170 five centimeters um so that's quite a hefty weight over 100 kilos 100 plus 100 102 kilo for for my height so yeah so i had double chins and a big fucking belly on me beer belly but i also had muscle i must say i had a lot of muscle the muscle actually my muscle kind of yeah, you can, as you guys can see here, no more, I can flex. I flex my muscle a bit, but there's no more, no more huge muscle there in my triceps or biceps. Uh, but yeah, I can flex a bit, but it's not really uh, flex. Yeah, so most of them, a lot of the muscle is gone too with the flab, the flabby flab flabby fat and then it's quite a bit of muscle is gone but because actually I haven't done any exercise whatsoever for 40 40 days I think I went walking around the, the block one time once and I walked down to the nearby bowling club twice walk there come back walk there come back uh, and that was it that was my three pieces of exercise in 40 days which, as you guys can guess, it's not enough at all. You should do that every day. At least go walk, do a few push-ups, do a few setups, which I haven't done. I just didn't do anything at all. I just lied here in bed and mostly writing. My, I exercised my fingers. And, uh, hey, Viking, how you doing, buddy? I warned you about losing muscle. Yeah. But the good thing about losing muscle is that you could get it back easily, you know. I mean, it's only muscle. It's only elastic of your um, of your meat or your raw meat. It's just you lose it and then, you know, you once you start using it again, it comes back again. So I don't, so I'm not too bothered about that. You know, I mean, it's, it's quick quick and relatively painless and easy <clears throat> to get your muscle back. So I wouldn't worry too much about that guy, unless you're a professional bodybuilder or something, but I'm not anything, I've not in, I'm not into bodybuilding or stuff like that. Just a normal average uh, human being. But um, my flexibility definitely improved a bit. I haven't really stretched or anything, but I can stretch now if I, if I need to. I can stretch and touch my, you know, put my head on my knees, for example. I think I can do that. Uh, I haven't even tried, but I'm sure I can do that. Um, I may try in a minute. Um, so that was the first thing is your physical body shape changed a lot. Your muscles, your fat, you lose your flap. And... Um, and you become, yeah, so I still, still, still pretty fucking hard here. My stomach probably sees a little bit of my hidden away, well hidden six pack. <laughs> um, so that was the first thing you notice, obviously. I think I lost in total maybe around 40 pounds, 15, 18 kilogram. Something I haven't really weighed myself accurately enough to be a hundred percent sure, but in that uh, ballpark range, I've lost that amount. Then this, the other thing that okay, so after when I started off, 
it was only water, right? Only absolute. The first two weeks, maybe 20, maybe even 20 days, I think was basically water. Then around 20 days, I started to, to make myself tea. I bought some uh, tea bags. I started to take tea and also coffee. Uh, I started making coffee because I needed the energy, right? The energy was, uh, my energy levels were really dropping off after about almost 20 days. I could feel, I just felt exhausted, you know, and couldn't even walk hardly. I mean, not far. So I, I just needed that coffee. Hey, Jim, how are you doing? Hey, Angel, look here, honey. This is Jim, Jim Alvir. Mm. Say hi, baby. Hi. <laughs> so, hey, Jim, by the way, buddy, thanks for all the help you, you've been uh, extending to Angel's mummy. Huh? Thank you so much. We really appreciate that. Right, Angel? Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> Are you happy, Angel? Yeah. I, okay, very cool. And thank you, Jim. That's really, really highly appreciated. Um, yeah, so guys, uh, then the second thing, my energy levels were really running low. I tried to take some tea, what you know, hot water and tea, hot water and coffee. Coffee actually helped quite a bit. Jimmy is saying, are you okay, Frank? Yeah, 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 yeah. Feeling better now. The only one, oh yes, and then, uh, so the, except for the, now that Jimmy is asking, uh, except for the bloody low energy levels at about 20 days, uh, I also, f um, at about 25, 25 days, I start getting heavy pains in my, in my feet, guys, flipping gout. I, I could, I just cannot figure it out. I mean, you can see here, look here, you see my toes here, look at the gap here. And then here, here, this area here, very painful. And on this side on my right side here this was blue this turned blue no no red first red then it became bluish darkish color very red very painful here and and here and i tried to cope i tried to cope with it for you know guys seriously 10 days just trying to cope with the bloody pain and um And it was very bad. I could hardly walk, really seriously. I could hardly put my feet down and step. Just going to the toilet out the door there was was a mission, a mission and a half. So I had this gout pain that was really, 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 it was more than gout. It was the discoloration of the foot, blue or reddish and then bluish, very painful, um, any kind of, pressure, touching, whatever was horrendously painful and uh, made walking a real mission. Getting up, getting out of bed was a mission. Going to the toilet was a mission. Um, so, um, um, so that was bad. And then I was forced to, to buy like uh, gout, the gout medicine again. It's called the gout bomb. bomb here in South Africa. It consists of 10 different pills that they put together in one packet and you take them all. Now, the problem with this medicine, guys, is that because you take 10 different medicines, uh, I tried it once without um, just on an empty stomach. I was I had a really terrible, terrible stomach for like two days or two or three days. I had diarrhea, horrific. And so I, so this, so I took it, I think four times, the gut bomb into enable me to actually walk, to go out. We had to go out once a week to buy some food for Angel, for example. Uh, she had a very basic diet guys. And we just bought, we'll talk about her diet in a moment. She can tell you guys in a moment. Um, Jim says you went on a month fast. Yeah, it's more than a month, guys. It's about 40, I think it's over 40 days today. But um, Kevin Riddell says it's not healthy to fast for that long. 
why did you do it? Okay, guys, so we're also talking about the whys, right? So actually, I remember I said in the first or second or whatever, first week, to, to clear up my mental, to, to get clarity in my head, because I felt sometimes I was just forgetting things, especially names, names of places, faces. I just kept on forgetting. And I think actually that improved. I felt now after 40 days, I'm, I'm, I, I used to forget words, simple words, uh, names, names of towns, cities um, I've been. Uh, people, names of people, you know, I just kept forgetting all these things. And uh, I think that has definitely improved. And um, then the skin here under my eye here, the spot here, there was uh, this skin would thicken up and then peel and then thicken up every week it would happen, right? And I think it, during the last 40 days, it only happened once. So it slows, it really slowed down, although it's still there, the spot, and it's still, it's still there, but it's, it did slow down the, and, and this side as well, this side, you see here, this little sore, that side there, that, that also slowed down a hell of a lot. Then all the itching and skin conditions and all that stuff that you get, that's to do with intake of sugar and starch. All of that disappeared, most of it, um, all the allergies. I was kind of surprised. I thought I would sleep better, uh, but I didn't. Not that I slept badly, but my sleep was average. So that was not bad. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. I would sleep pretty, pretty much not bad. Probably better than before, I would say the fast. Probably a little bit better. Okay, so that improved. The skin condition improved, my memory and uh, improved. Um, then the, I lost a lot of weight, like I said. All um, look, guys, when you lose your weight, like I did, 15, 18 kilogram, 40 pounds. What happens when you start to fast? Okay, which is very important. Ooh, autophagy, right? Autophagy. Autophagy means some scientists a couple of years ago, two, three, four years ago, he got a Nobel Prize because he is now officially proven autophagy, right? Autophagy is now part of science. Although it's been well known for thousands of years. I mean, Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad, all these guys, Gandhi, all these guys fasted for, the, for a reason. And the reason was for health. And why, why health? Because... Once your body, once you, you're not eating anything, right? So what is your body living on? What is it consisting of? It's consisting of whatever is in, available in your body. So what is the first thing that gets consumed? All sugars in your body gets consumed. Within the first two days, all the sugar that's left over gets consumed. Then the starch gets consumed. And then after that, after about two days, what is what gets consumed? Your fat, your own body fat that gets consumed. So as we all know by now, or most of us should know by now, guys, is that cancers, um, all kinds of uh, un unhealthy things. I mean, anything that's unhealthy lives on sugar and, and or starch. So base, a basic precondition of cancer is sugar. Okay, guys. So think about that. So now you have consumed all your sugar. You've consumed all your starch. What is next? Your fat. What is in your fat? In your fat is living all these unhealthy organisms like cancers, like all these, on, all these unhealthy things that makes you itchy, that gives you all these unhealthy conditions, yeast, and uh, inflammation, inflammation, all the fucking aches and pains that you feel every single day of your life comes from inflammation, inflammation living on fat and sugar. Consi uh, that is what it con consumes every single day. So 
after you have cons after your own body consumed all the sugar and then then it then starts to consume all the fat all that shit that lives on the fat in your body all of that gets consumed guys so i have no idea of the i haven't done any uh, me medical test on me although i know kind of that i had you know on and off for the last six seven years i had or yeah six seven seven years pretty much i had uh, diabetes i had allergies i had inflammation so that all of that i think got consumed but it's very 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 fucking weird that i got this gout this uric acid build up somehow in my body so it's just really weird i have no idea although i did read uh, in a, in a, in a, you know, I did read that somehow if you lose a lot of weight suddenly too fast, there can be a buildup of uric acid in your blood, which gives you that gout, right? So maybe that is, might, it might be what happened. There was a huge loss of weight and then suddenly your, my uric acid spiked. And that gave me the bloody gouts. I think there's nothing else I can think of. Um, and um, to be able to move, I had to take the bloody uh, gout bomb. And to take the gout bomb, I had to eat something. Because like I told you guys, if you take the gout bomb without food on an empty stomach, you get flippin' diarrhea. Diarrhea for like two, three days at a time. Horrible. I mean, so I did take, a, I did um you know take occasion i mean okay the other thing that i read the other thing i read that was very very interesting is that if you take less than 800 calories a day 800 is the max 500 to 800 calories in that range then strictly speaking you're still fasting apparently according to the literature online so 500 grams of of food it consists of basically two cups of rice, for example, two cups. So, or I don't know, you know, you have to um, correspond that with whatever bread or vegetables or meat or whatever. But the point is that two cups of rice consists of about 500 milligrams of food. If you, if you eat 500 milligrams of food a day, you're still considered to be fasting. So that was kind of interesting for me. So at least four times I did take, um, I did consume, uh, you know, probably half a cup of rice and a little bit of egg and, or maybe one slice of bread or, oh, okay, we're back live. Sorry guys. We took a while to reconnect there, Jeez. Okay, guys, we're nine guys here online. Let me quickly check the comments. Jim says, I've been doing OMAD one meal a day since February. Used to it now. Wow, February, that's nine months. One meal a day. So when do you eat, Jim? Like in the evening or in the morning or afternoon? And what do you eat? And yeah, just tell us more. Keith, Kevin Radal, you can burn fats and sugars by eating a healthy diet and exercising. Exercise can just be walking. But yeah, that's correct. That is what Jim is doing. The old man, one meal a day and um, probably some exercise. Yeah, I agree. That is true. But I for the last, okay, wait, I'm going to come back to my fasting in a moment. But I can't imagine fasting a week, let alone more than a month, says Jim. Well, I'm gonna come back to that in a moment, guys. Give me a moment. Have you done this? But have you done this before, us, Jim? Okay, I'm gonna come back to it in a second. Kevin Radal, eating even just one meal a day is better than fasting. Says Kevin. Yes, I I read one meal a day is fasting more than that. It's starvation. James Miller, you live in a imaginary world you need to eat healthy and exercise god bless you and angel says james okay guys that's a good question uh, jim asked if i did it before yes i've actually been fasting for the last since 1997 i think so it's 20 years no it's more than 20 it's 25 years sorry i've been fasting for the last 25 years every year even if it's just seven days 
okay, no food. But usually, I mean, in my early years, I would fast three, four, five times a year, almost every month, sometimes every two months. I would fast for 10 days. I did it very regularly then. But um, in the more recent years, guys, I've been slacking off um, maybe 10 days in a year, so on. So I've been doing it for 25 years. Um, but I always had it in my mind that I want to do 30 or 40 days. So I did it for 30 days very well. I mean, rock solid water, water, right? Like I said, and then I got the gout. So when I came into the 30 days, I, I had to I had to take my gout medicine and I that I had to do a little bit of food. Like I said, 500 uh, kilojoules or whatever, uh, which is but still fasting, right? Uh, because I mean, on the average, you're supposed to consume 2,000 kilojoules a day. That's a normal human being's food intake, 2,000. But if you do around 500, it's still uh, it's still considered to be fasting. So over the last, so let's say from 30 to today, today is about. 42 days, 42 days, yeah, 42 days today. I have taken a little bit of food um, and still, but still under the, under the, uh, inside the boundaries of fasting, basically, right? And I'm still continuing maybe another few more days because of that. But I think I did a good solid 30 days fast. Not not the 40 days I had in my mind, uh, totally utterly just water or, 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 or water and tea or water and coffee. But so I'm going to continue at this pace I'm doing now, which is about 500 milligrams a day of food. And see, and then maybe later on, I'm going to try and maybe next week, I'm going to try and do another uh, five days, only water again or water and tea or yeah, water, tea and coffee. That's the, that's the way I look at it right now, guys. Um, and I mean, thousands of people. I mean, fasting was the only medicine available. If you go back a few hundred years, a few thousand years, there was no other medicine. You couldn't go to a pharmacy, pop down the road, buy whatever, you know, you want to cure yourself, right? The only way to cure yourself was through fasting. And everybody knew that. It was a very common knowledge. I mean, everybody. I mean, and that's why all these great men, they all did it. All of them, Jesus, Muhammad, uh, Buddha, of course. Um, and then a lot of other people did that, uh, guys. So it's nothing new, nothing new under the sun. <laughs> nothing new under the sun. Um, yeah, so the so for me, the only thing that I noticed that was really negative was the flippant gout, spiking my uric acid. And I still cannot figure it out. Hey, guys, by the way, give us a thumbs up there, guys. Hey, Angel, can you tell the guys here to give us a thumbs up, honey? Yes, mm -hmm. lovely Angel. What are you doing under the blanket? No, the light is too sharp. Oh, the light is too sharp for your little eyes. Yeah. Show us. What are you, are you reading? What are you doing? Oh, you're reading a story. Can I wait, wait to show us a story? No, what, is, what, what language is that? It's mixed English and Tagalog. Or mix English Tagalog, you're reading mm. a story. How about your writing, honey? Uh, how's your writing coming along? Almost finished. Oh, yeah? How many words now? 9,000. 9,000. Uh, how many words you sent me already? 14? 12. 12. So it's 23,000, 21,000. Uh, uh, guys, I've been editing Angel's story of her life. Amazing story, guys. You guys will enjoyed so much to read her little story and now she's just finishing the second half of her story and um and i'm gonna edit that and then put it into a book hey guys don't forget my book come on guys don't forget please order it from me i'm gonna put some details underneath here this video i'm gonna put the details to my book again you guys can send the money directly. You, you guys, please, guys, I know 
it's a guidebook on the Philippines, living and dating and finding the the right one, the right one for you. How to find that girl, how to settle down in the Philippines, guys. And the book is all about that. Uh, a lot of it based on my own personal experiences. Lots and lots of little tales and, and adventures from my own self. And um, the basically, there, I'm going to put the details down below, but it basically it means you can send money directly to Angel's mummy because she really needs it, guys. Shit. It's like, it's like Jim is doing, by the way, guys. Jim is uh, helping each and every month, and it's a big relief for Angel here. And um, so that's really wonderful. Thanks, Jim. Um, so although it's not quite enough, but it still helps a hell of a lot. Um, you know, the, I heard the price of inflation in the Philippines is, is insane. Here in South Africa, it's insane. I mean, we are just not, we have no income. So we are just literally trying to finish these books. Uh, the main obstacle I have, I'm facing now is that I cannot upload the book to Amazon because, well, I haven't been in South Africa working since 1980s, 89. So I have no tax number. <laughs> I'm not keen to get a tax number. <laughs> so... I cannot upload my book on Amazon now, and Angel can't do it either because the Amazon do n they they don't deal with the Philippine bank. So she, we can't use her name. We can't use my name. I'm talking to a friend of mine, South African guy, and he's he can do it, but I'm I'm struggling with the format of the book. Fucking hell, it's insane. But in the meantime, guys, you guys can order from me directly. Um, I'm gonna leave my details. Uh, either you can use my PayPal, which is right here on, uh, you can see it, probably a little sign here on my uh, YouTube channel, PayPal, to send me $20, please, guys, $20, and then send me your email address, and I, I post you the, uh, I will email you the book via Word or PDF, uh, or both, and then... Um, Otherwise, please send some money. To, uh, I will leave Angel's mommy's name and address and number. And or you can also send it to us via um, uh, what's the name of that, honey? World Remit. World Remit. Yeah, World Remit. Uh, Western Union. The normal, uh, the normal uh, suspects. Um, and there's so it's sent to Angel's mommy. Send to me via PayPal, send to me via World Remit or Western Union. And I will leave all the details here below, guys. You've got to read this book. You got to, it's amazing. All my adventures in Philippines and all this stuff, you know, very interesting stories about visas, about setting up a business and da da da. So, guys, please remember. Okay, let's get back to the topic of. Uh, oh, we got six thumbs up. Okay, we got 13 people watching. Very nice. Okay, guys, so, um, so I've been doing it for 25 years fasting every year uh, to longer and shorter degree. But this is my longest fast by a long, long, long shot. It's always been a dream of mine. I've always dreamt of, of, of fasting for 30 or 40 days. So, But this time, when I just before 30, uh, 30 days, I had this gout. I was forced to eat something a little bit, 500 milligrams a day. So my last 10 days kind of petered out a bit. But I'm still continuing. Still, I'm still going to try and make a comeback. So let's say maybe Monday or so. I'm going to do maybe another just five days water fast. And then it's going to be around almost 50 days, I think, by the end of next week. Maybe by the, not this Monday, the next Monday is going to be about 50 days on and off fasting. But so guys, that's, um, yeah, I've cleared up my mind. I've cleared up my memory quite a bit. I've cleared up my skin a bit. I slowed down, slowed down. It's still rough and thick, but it's not peeling like it used to. I think I've I've lost my double chin. It's a little bit of a chin here, guys. Um, I lost my gut. Gut is gone. Um, I lost a bit of muscle, but I'm going to get that back. Uh, and what else did I want to do? Um... Oh, yes, and I did. I finished my book. In this time, I was fasting. I started the second book. 
The second book is called um, The Last Ninja. The Last Ninja, guys. This is an amazing story, uh, my story, how I left South Africa in, you know, it's just, right now I've just finished basically the last five years before I left South Africa, uh, 1985 to 1990. 1990, I left South Africa, I went to Asia. Uh, and I met uh, uh, an amazing, amazing man there. And that's the story. It's called The Last Ninja. And I'm going to write a few books in those, <clears throat> along those terms, The Last Ninja. Then I'm going to, um, The Last Backpacker, The Last English Teacher. These are all going to be the, my own experiences in Asia for 30 years. And uh, then I'm also starting another book. It's about, it's going to be about, survival how, how can you protect yourself how can you survive anywhere in the world guys we're going into a situation where the world is changing very 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 fast and uh, it's becoming quite concerning um i mean everybody is already talking we, the whole world is in a recession come on guys it's all numbers and playing and playing with numbers but the bottom line is we are the whole world is in a recession already for already three years now you know and it's not coming out it's not coming out it's, it's getting deeper and you got and by and everything is collapsing slowly but slowly you know crypto is collapsing but why why is crypto collapsing it's because the real banks are collapsing right again um uh, pension funds are collapsing um <laughs> guys Work is collapsing. There's no way I can find a job here in South Africa. I've been here now for 10, 11 months. No work. Even online is getting really hard to find jobs. So we have we had no income. Well, a, li a tiny little bit of income uh, for two months. I think I had one single student in China on a weekend. I, pay I taught him twice on a weekend. And then I got like uh, 500 rand a a weekend i think it was so that was 1500 pesos on a weekend so that was our only tiny little bit of income and now we are trying to write our books so that we can actually just get a little tiny little bit of income we only need 2000 where our, our rent here is in this room the rent in this room guys uh that we're renting is uh 1600 rand and Angel is there reading her little story. She's supposed to write. Um, so the rent here is 1,500 rand, which is about 5,000 pesos, which is about 90 US dollar, I guess, 90 or 80 US dollar. And then food, right now I don't really consume any food. Angel consumes a tiny little bit. Bread, noodles, rice, and a little bit of vegetable. Uh, basically, we're a vegetarian now. We don't eat any meat and jam and butter and stuff like that. So that's what she's consuming. It's about 500 rand a, a month. So basically, we consume around 2,000 rand a month. Basically, 150, 200 US dollar will be enough for us to pull through, which is what we are hoping to achieve by selling the books. So guys, don't be shy to order our books, please. Like I said, we have problems on Amazon right now. We can't upload right now, but hopefully we're going to find a way around it. But in the meantime, just contact us directly and um, get the details from underneath this video. The moment I'm going to upload it now, I'm going to put the details there as well. And previous videos are talking about my book. Just go back a couple of videos and you will see the book, the book, the book. Well, all the information is underneath the video. So thank you for that, guys. Um, yeah, so I can feel the fucking God here. It just, eesh, guys, I don't know what the hell is going on. It's really insane. My toes. Um, Angel is there. <laughs> My toes. So yeah, the gout became a really serious issue over the last two weeks. Um, and I have no idea why the uric acid spiked. So, okay. Um, but yeah, I think I've pretty much accomplished what I wanted to set out to accomplish, which is at least 30 days, 30 days, solid fasting, a lot of weight loss, 
hopefully killed off all the cancers and all that shit in my body. Hopefully I'm going to be clear for the next year or two or three or four or five years of any serious health um, issues, guys. That is my great goal in mind, you know, at least five years, you know, clear of any serious health issues. After five years, you can look at it again and do another, hopefully another 30 days or 40 days. But by that time, I'm going to be in my 60s. Uh, I'm 57 now. 57. So, yeah, so I'll be around 63. 63 to 65, I think it's another very good age to look at fasting or, or at least OMAD. One meal a day kind of thing, guys. Jim says, I thought you did it cold turkey. <laughs> well, it was cold turkey, but, you know, yeah. Uh, Jim says, true, James, eating healthy is the biggest hurdle with all the crap. Yeah, that's cheaply available. That's so true, guys. You go to the shop to find healthy food is... I would say 90%, 90% impossible. 90% guys, it's just crap. Absolute crap, Jim, you're right. It's like everything is processed. Everything except what can you buy in a supermarket that is not processed? It's amazing, guys. It's very, very hard. So it's it's not easy. It's not easy. Viking says, I also have a problem with gout when losing lots of weight fast. Ah, yeah, I think you told me that. You said you had massive gout because you, there must be something when you lose all this weight. Boom, when you lose like 15 kilograms, right? In two weeks or three weeks. Somehow, the, the, so, I guess it's not everyone, but in some people like you and me, there is this, this fucking huge uric acid built up in your in our bodies. And I don't know how to release that. That is that is what is bothering me at the moment. Is how can I release that uric acid buildup? And I, I haven't found a way yet. But I, I'm I'm gonna try again, let's say from Monday. And then um, try another strong fast for maybe five days and see if, if it's going to improve or not, Viking. James Miller, sounds like you need to focus on finding work instead of not eating. Yeah, James, there's no work around uh, for, for guys like me at 57. Maybe in Canada they hire the older guys. I, I'm not sure, but not, not here in South Africa. I've sent my um, CV, my curriculum vitae, vitae um, or my uh, resume. I've sent it away. I send it away every single day, maybe 10, 10 jobs a day. I've sent it away hundreds of times. And the only answer is, well, we, you, are, you are not qualified. I mean, it's crazy. I'm not qualified. I'm overly qualified for, for any of these jobs I send it to. I'm a I'm hundred times qualified, but I just keep getting replies. Sir, you, we have looked at your CV, but you don't qualify for the job. And then I would I, I inevitably ask them, what do you mean? I'm overqualified? And then I never ever get a reply back, of course. <laughs> but I know what it's all about. It's They look at the age, 57 years old or going on 58. And immediately, of course, they think, well, this guy is over the hill and you know they it's it i think it's worldwide it's unspoken it's an unspoken fact of life that once you reach 50 55 you won't find a normal job it's just the way it is i don't i can't think of any country in the world where you would find a normal job is there any country out there is canada a country like that is us a country like that is Europe like that, is Australia like that, where they welcome you with open arms at the age of 57 and said, yeah, come in, we're going to give you a job and we're going to make sure you're employed. <laughs> uh, if there's a country out there, let me know where that is, guys, so that I can, I can go there. 
that is the that is the main reason I'm writing my books, and um, so I can be self-employed. It's called self-employed. I've been self-employed actually all my life, guys. So since the age of um, since the last twenty-five years i've been self-employed i work for myself i taught english and i taught survival training in asia for myself and i was a private tutor i just taught i just go to people's homes and i in china in, first in taiwan then in hong kong then in china um and then i set up a resort in the philippines i built a resort there out of my savings i the money i made in china I spent all my money to build a resort and I we had it for 10 years. It did really well. We built it up out of the jungle, cut the trees down and we did the uh, promotion online, Airbnb and all that stuff. If you guys go look at Club Safari, Club with a K, K-L-U-B, Club Safari in the Philippines, in Mindanao, you will guys, uh, on Airbnb, we had over 50 reviews, all 50 reviews were five-star reviews. One of my customers from Canada, he came there and he said, no, this is impossible. Nobody can have a perfect five-star review set like you have. It must be some form of cheating. And he was very amazed. But then when he came there, he realized that we are very simple, but very direct and very good service. So that's, so that's what I did the last 10 years. I worked for myself. I had my own place. Before that, I worked for myself. I had my own course. And now I'm here in South Africa, my, the country of my birth. I haven't been uh, working here since 1989. And that's why I have no tax number. <laughs> A good thing, I suppose. I don't want to pay taxes as well. And uh, yeah, so I, I, I'm, I have to start a new career, which is as a writer, as a creator. That's why I'm doing my videos, guys. Don't, don't hesitate to support my videos. And that's why I'm editing Angel's book. Angel has an amazing life story, guys. You guys got to read her book. It's fucking will blow your mind away. Um, so, yeah, I don't think I need to find a job because there is no job for me. I'm just too old. Well, I mean, people in their minds, we are all, I'm old. Although in my mind, I'm about, I must say with the gout, I do feel a bit older than uh, I I, uh, look, age, guys, age. How old are you? How old are you right now? So usually what they do is they take three ages they, they, and they put them together. There's your biological age. Uh, when The date you're born. I was born in 1965, which made, makes me 90, uh, 57 years old right now, going on 58 next year, early April or mid-April. Um, so you have your, I'm 57 there, years old. But they also look at your uh, your age, um, your health. So right now, after 30, 40 days of fasting, I am pretty fucking healthy. I'm probably at, at the max. I'm 30 years old, my body right now. Great condition, great weight, killed off all my cancers and all my, um, you know, all the negative sh shit in me calm, relaxed, focused, um, no anger, no fear, no uh, hatreds, no, um, no stress. Stress, the number one killer, guys. If you can get rid of your stress, get rid of your excess stress, you guys are doing great. So all of that is gone. My body is in good shape. So I'm about 30 years old there. So that's 30, that's 57 plus 30 is 97, right? And then finally, your mind, mental age. How strong, how young or old do you feel mentally? Now, uh, yes, I have stress, the income, because there is no income, right? So that is a huge stress. But at the same time, I know if I keep writing and we can survive for another, I don't know, one, two, three months, uh, with $200 a month income, if we can get that, then I can get out of this situation. I can slowly, gradually pull myself out of it, right? So, yeah, so there is stress. 
that stress there that I need $200 a month for the moment and Angel's mommy needs a couple, you know, three, uh, 5,000 pesos, uh, $100 a month. So that's $300, $300 and I can get out of my stress. And I need, I need, I need to just keep on writing, keep on believing, keep on pushing myself forward. And, and you guys, you guys are our subscribers. You guys are our friends. You guys have seen us surviving for the last three years. You guys have fo been following our channel. So you guys know where we are and, and we, and to a certain extent, we also depend on you guys. Okay. We do depend on you guys to, to see us through a little bit. So guys, yeah. So I would say mentally, mentally, I'm about 40. Let's say 40, right? So that is uh, 57 plus 30 for my physical body now. I feel in really good shape. That's 97 plus 40 for mentally with a little bit of stress. So that is 137 years old divided by three. 137, I don't have a calculator here, but let us <laughs> let me think for a moment. It's about... 40, uh, it's about 40, 44, 44, 45, 45 point one, point 45.1.2, 45.2. So I am, I'm about right now, my real age is 45 years old. I can, I can accept that. I can accept that. And if I come out of my mental stress situation, I'll be down to 30. I'll be down to 100. I'll, I'll, I'll be about 41 years old, right? But right now I'm about 45 years old in reality, even though my biological age is 57. Can you guys see that? So, yeah. Okay, let's go back to the comments, guys. Michael Morris, Frank the Tank. Hey, I have no more tank, man. <laughs> No more tank. The tank is gone. <laughs> hey, Michael, how you doing, man? Uh, 30 days, you're hardcore. <laughs> I would survive three days, says Michael. <laughs> no, you have never tried. If you don't try, Michael, how do you know you can't do 30 days? You don't know, but you can. You can. You'll find the work. Don't give up, Frank, says James. Okay, buddy. I don't think I, I want the work anymore, but... I think, uh, except for myself, lots of work in Canada, says Michael Morris. For how old? For what age group? <laughs> James Miller, a lot of work in America. Age doesn't matter. Just like excuses doesn't matter. Okay. Okay, cool. I see a lot of homeless in America as well, in the USA. Do you have a cancer? Ask Scorpio. No, I don't think so. But I think I have a, a skin cancer here, guys. This spot. It's a pre-cancer. Pre-cancer is peeling, peeling, always peeling off. Don't drink so so you don't get gout, says Scorpio. Okay. Well, yeah, I didn't drink, uh, drink anything. Uh, you mean beer or alcohol? Yeah, that's another thing. We didn't have any alcohol for 42 days, 43 days now. No beer, no wine, no brandy, no whiskey, nothing. So that's that's interesting. Uh, hi, and Waka Waka says Damien. Damien made marple. Marple? Damien marple. <laughs> cool. Where are you now, Damien? Kudos to Angel and Francois. Yeah, bro. That's nice, Damien. Thank you. Where are you now? Hey, look at Scorpio. Hey, hey, hey. Scorpio 7, $9.99. Very nice, guys. Hey, guys, do you know what? You guys won't believe this, but uh, last night I got a message from from my YouTube. My YouTube uh, AdSense. AdSense. It's like the payment arm of YouTube. And they said, we've sent you an amount of money. So I was like, I went, I was like, oh, I haven't heard from YouTube sending me money for three years. So I was kind of like, oh, what the hell is going on? Let me check. So I checked. And, and guess what, guys? 
about a year ago uh, in this uh, in November last year, right, or October last year, YouTube started sending send, send us a lot of warnings about um, you have to fill in your tax information. So I, I, I filled in my tax information in the USA. I registered myself. And so then I never ever heard from YouTube or maybe I just didn't pay attention or maybe it just slipped by. But anyway, so last night I was online. I was like checking what the fuck is going on now. Guess what I guess what happened uh, over the last um, one year since December last year, guys. YouTube has actually sent me three times, three times money. In December last year, they sent me 85 US dollar, 85. That, so basically what YouTube does is they wait till you have somehow accumulated 100 US dollar. Then they took off $15.15 in taxes and they sent me $85. And then they repeated the process again in June and possibly, possibly they repeated it again last week. So each time they send me about $85 or 83 or whatever. Um, so, so three times 85, that's about 260 US dollar. <laughs> I received from YouTube over the last one year. Oh my God, guys, I was kind of totally shocked. They sent it to a, my bank account in the Philippines. Um, so so thanks, guys. Hey, thanks, uh, Scorpio, for sending me $10, buddy. That actually is helping me. I didn't realize I still that YouTube is still sending me money, $200 or $300 in, in a year. <laughs> So now the only question is I have to go to the ATM and then try and get the money, uh, withdraw the money from my uh, Filipino bank account to South Africa. But I can do that. I can do that. So that's that's great. Thanks. Thanks, Scorpio. That really helps. So guys, yeah. So if you feel like sending me money, guys, don't wait. Don't hesitate. Send. <laughs> that, that is last night. I couldn't believe it. I was totally shocked. Huh? They have sent me... $300 in one year. Wow. So guys, that is good news. That is good, good, good news. So don't wait. Don't hesitate, please. Roblox. Roblox is laughing. Haha. <laughs> Just a little help. Thank you, Scorpio. That really helps, buddy. Thanks a lot. Damien Maple. Best of health. Yeah, guys. Best of health. I totally agree. Uh, hey, guys. Don't, don't, don't. Give us a thumbs up. Don't, uh, Angel, can you tell the guys again to give us a thumbs up, honey? Baby. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Angel is reading like a monster. What are you reading, baby? What is the book about? Mm, well, it's just a story. Just a storybook. Yeah. Is it a love story? Yeah, mostly. And it's just giving me ideas. Idea. Oh, how to write your own book, right? Cool, 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 cool. Okay, you have almost you have uh, now twenty one thousand words, huh? Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, guys, you you heard it from Angel there. She's writing her own story of her own life, and it's really amazing. And uh, guys, uh, I'm editing her book, and we're gonna publish it uh, soon. I hope in one week or two weeks, week uh, one maybe ten days, it's gonna be out and ready. And you guys gotta buy it. Uh, um. Wow, 55 minutes. Okay, guys. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, I've discussed my fasting and I'm continuing. I'm continuing. Um, but uh, I was supposed to go and get the gout medicine again because the pain is coming back again. But, yeah. Look, the gout medicine here in South Africa is amazing, guys. Ten pills. Ten. And you fucking take the whole thing. And it, boom, it hits you, hits you like a pull, like a, like a ton of bricks, but it works. But it works for like a few days. I, I noticed like three, four days, and then you have to take another card bomb. I may, I probably had to take a card bomb today again, but I, 
I couldn't be bothered to go down. Now the pharmacy is closed. But okay, guys, very cool. Thank you, Scorpio, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, guys, thank you, Jim Alver. Thank you, Jim. Uh, Jim is great, guys. Jim is helping Angel's mummy and making Angel very happy every month. Uh, he's sending uh, money to Angel's mom, and it's very, very, very helpful. Um, it's amazing. Guys, to send, guys, it's insane. To, to send from here, South Africa, to Philippines, like, like for example, 2,000 pesos, right? If I want to send 2,000 pesos, it will cost me 1,000 pesos to send to Philippines. It's, it's like you have to go to um, Money Changer here, get a really shitty rate to use dollar. Then you use dollar, you take that to... Uh, Western Union. Western Union gives you another shitty rate to pesos, I think. No. Or how does it work? I mean, you send it, you send it, you go to Western Union, you send it straight by a run. Then the only the problem run for Philippine peso is very. Weird. Yeah, because first I change it to US dollar, and from US dollar, they change it to flip. That's what I said. So you change two times in the, and both times you lose a lot of money. And uh, so, and then of course they take the, the fee, the sending fee, which is also very unreasonable. And uh, so I think it, we, we tried to calculate one time. It was, it was almost like half, 50%. So it, it's not worth it for us to send if you are in Australia, New Zealand, Canada, USA, I think Europe, it's much easier and much more viable to send money to the Philippines. It's very cheap. It's like a couple of US dollar and and it's it's just much better if from there where you guys are than from here where we are. <laughs> There, we haven't met any Filipinos, have you? No, we haven't met any Filipino here, honey. Have we? No, I'm the only Filipino I see. Yeah, you're the only one here in 10, 11 months. So, yeah. So, so yeah, guys, there is no Filipinos here. And so there is no real, um, there's no real conveyor belt to the Philippines from here, like you have everywhere in the world. When I was, when we were in the Philippines last year, we tried to send some of our stuff back to the uh, South Africa, from Philippines to South Africa via post. There, there is no postal connection. There's no postal connection between Philippines and South Africa. It was insane. It was totally, utterly insane. So there is no channels right now. I don't know if, yeah. So guys, there you go. Okay, guys, thanks a lot. Um, we got we're coming up to one hour. It's fifty nine minutes right yeah, now. Yeah, maybe a little bit a little shading again. Yeah, what time is it now, honey? One thirty nine, almost two. Oh, almost two o'clock. Hey guys, thanks for watching us. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for your advice, for your input. Thanks for the uh, uh ten dollars, Scorpio. And guys, um, yeah. So guys, thanks a lot for everything. And remember the information. I'm putting it. I'm gonna put it here in the next ten minutes. The next ten minutes, just come back, read the information. How do you guys can contact us? How to get our book? My book on the Philippines, the adventures, the fun, the craziness, the frustrations, everything. Guys, don't forget. Okay. Okay, Angel. Bye, bye, baby. Bye, guys. Thanks a lot. <laughs> okay, Angel is reading. Bye bye, baby. Bye. Bye bye, guys. Thanks a lot. Huh? Bye bye, bye bye. Okay.